What's cracking, everybody? I'm Joe Field, the Sarcastic Griffin. Today, we're going to read some fairy tales. So stay tuned. Hi, everyone. I'm Joe. And today, we're going to be reading one of the grim fairy tales. Now, the way that I'm going to format this particular series, I plan on reading all or most of them, just in order. And these are all going to be cold reads. So if you've never read one before, we'll be in it together. Um, the particular translation that I'm using, actually, is done by this guy, Jack Zipes. Highly recommend it. It's pretty good. Um, Jack Zipes uh, is apparently one of the more recent translators who is really great when it comes to the Grimm stuff. He also happens to have translated the original tales, which I really want to get my hands on because some of them are really dark and a lot less sanitized than the later Grimm stories. But for now, this will do. And again, these are all going to be cold reads. I'm going to read a story each time. I have a video. And then I will give my own feedback. And in case you hadn't noticed, yeah. My videos are unscripted. <sighs> Story number one. The Frog King. Or Iron Heinrich. In olden times, when wishing still helped, there lived a king whose daughters were all beautiful. But the youngest was so beautiful that the sun itself, which had seen so many things, was always filled with amazement each time it cast its rays upon her face. Now there was a great dark forest near the king's castle, and in this forest, beneath an old linden tree, was a well. Whenever the days were very hot, the king's daughter would go into this forest and sit down by the edge of the cool well. If she became bored, she would take her golden ball, throw it into the air, and catch it. More than anything else, she loved playing with this ball. One day, it so happened that the ball did not fall back into the princess's little hand as she reached out to catch it. Instead, it bounced right by her and rolled straight into the water. The princess followed it with her eyes, but the ball disappeared, and the well was deep, so very deep that she could not see the bottom. She began to cry, and she cried louder and louder, for there was nothing that could comfort her. As she sat there, grieving over her loss, a voice called out to her. What's the matter, princess? Your tears can move even a stone to pity. She looked around to see where the voice was coming from, and saw a frog sticking his thick, ugly head out of the water. Oh, it's you, old water splasher, she said. I'm crying because my golden ball has fallen into the well. Be quiet and stop crying, the frog responded. I'm sure I can help you, but what will you give me if I fetch your plaything? Whatever you like, dear frog, she said. My clothes, my pearls and jewels, even the golden crown I'm wearing on my head. I don't want your clothes, your pearls and jewels, or your golden crown, the frog replied. But if you will love me, and let me be your companion and playmate, and let me sit beside you at the table, eat from your little golden plate, drink out of your little cup, and sleep in your little bed. If you promise me all that, I'll dive down and retrieve your golden ball. Oh yes, she said, I'll promise you anything you want, if only you'll bring back the ball. However she thought. What nonsense that stupid frog talks. He just sits in the water croaking with the rest of the frogs. How can he expect a human being to, upset, to accept him as a companion? Once the frog had her promise, he dipped his head under the water, dived downward, and soon came paddling back to the surface with the ball in his mouth. Then he threw it onto the grass. The princess was so delighted to see her beautiful plaything again, that she picked it up and ran off with it. Wait, wait, cried the frog. Take me with you. I can't run like you. 
He croaked as loudly as he could, but what good did it do? She paid no attention to him. Instead, she rushed home and soon forgot about the poor frog, who had to climb back down into his well. The next day, as she sat at the table with the king and his courtiers, and ate from her little golden plate, something came crawling, splish, splash, splish, splash, up the marble steps. When it reached the top, it knocked at the door and cried out, Princess, youngest daughter, open up. She ran to see who was outside, but when she opened the door and saw the frog, she quickly slammed the door shut and went back to the table in a state of fright. The king could clearly see her heart was thumping and said, My child, what are you afraid of? Has a giant come to get you? Oh no, she answered. It's not a giant, but a nasty frog. What does a frog want with you? Oh dear father, yesterday when I was sitting and playing near the well in the forest, my golden ball fell into the water. And because I cried so much, the frog fetched it for me, and because he insisted, I had to promise he would, could be my companion. But I never thought he'd get out of the water. Now he's outside and wants to come in and be with me. Just then, there was a second knock at the door, and a voice cried out, Princess, princess, youngest daughter, open up and let me in. Have you forgotten what you promised, down by the well's cool water? Princess, princess, youngest daughter, open up and let me in. Then the king said, If you made a promise, you must keep it. Go and let him in. After she went and opened the door, the frog hopped into the room and followed her right to her chair, where he plopped himself down and cried out, Lift me up beside you. She refused until the king finally ordered her to do so. Once the frog was on the chair, he wanted to climb onto the table, and when he made it to the table, he said, Now push your little golden plate nearer to me so we can eat together. To be sure, she did this, but it was quite clear that she did not like it. The frog enjoyed his meal, while each bite the princess took got stuck in her throat. Finally, he said, I've had enough, and now I'm tired. Carry me upstairs to your room and get your silken bed ready so we can go to sleep. The princess began to cry because the cold frog frightened her. She did not even have enough courage to touch him, and yet, now she was supposed to let him sleep in her beautiful clean bed. But the king gave her an angry look and said, it's not proper to scorn someone who helped you when you were in trouble. So she picked up the frog with her two fingers, carried him upstairs, and set him down in a corner. Soon after she had got into bed, he came crawling over to her and said, I'm tired and want to sleep as much as you do. Lift me up or I'll tell your father. This made the princess extremely angry. And after she picked him up, she threw him against the wall with all her might. Now you can have your rest, you nasty frog. However, when he fell to the ground, he was no longer a frog, but a prince with kind and beautiful eyes. So in keeping with her father's wishes, she accepted him as her dear companion and husband, whereupon the prince told her that a wicked witch had cast a spell over him, and no one could have got him out of the well except her, and now he intended to take her to his kingdom the next day. Then they fell asleep, and in the morning, when the sun woke them, a coach drawn by eight white horses came driving up. The horses had ostrich plumes on their heads and harnesses with golden chains. At the back of the coach stood faithful Heinrich, the young king's servant. He had been so distressed when he learned his master had been turned into a frog that he had ordered three iron bands be wrapped around his heart to keep it from bursting with grief and sadness. But now the coach had come to bring the young king back to his kingdom, and faithful Heinrich helped the prince and princess into it and then took his place at the back again. He was overcome by joy because his master had been saved. When they had traveled some distance, the prince heard a cracking noise behind him as if something had broken. He turned around and cried out, Heinrich, the coach is breaking. No, my lord. 
It's really nothing but the band around my heart, for it nearly fell apart when the witch did cast her spell, and made you live as a frog in a well. The cracking noise was heard two more times along the way, and the prince thought each time that the coach was breaking. But the noise was only the sound of the band snapping from faithful Heinrich's heart, for he knew his master was safe and happy. The end. What the hell was that? Okay. So. This is not how I remember the story going. Um, I remember the story of the Frog Prince being a little more along the lines of... I remember the ball part. Um, helping her out. But him expecting a kiss or something like that in return. And then the kiss is what turns him back into a prince. And I think that that's also kind of a stereotype now. Of... Uh, or... Maybe not a stereotype. It's a trope that you break the spell with a kiss and that's how they get turned back. But what was that? That was... There were so many strange things. And I love the grim fairy tales for their weirdness. But, like, this was, like, very odd. Um, I feel for the princess in this story a lot. Um... I also question her intelligence, or maybe not her intelligence, but her her age. I find that the story is very lacking in any details about how old the princess is. We don't know if she's a woman, but we know she's the youngest daughter of the king. That she enjoys playing with a golden ball. And that she's not betrothed. So, it's really hard to place where her age would be in this case. She's outside playing around. And maybe princesses don't have that much to do besides play around. But the way that she talks makes me think that she's probably... Somewhere in the age range between 8 and 16. That's a really weird age range to be in. Um, I know that they got married a lot younger there. But. I don't know. And also the fact that the frog is talking. I guess if we're to accept fairy tale logic. Which we probably should since this is in fact a fairy tale. That. Anything can talk that shouldn't be able to talk. And if the characters accept it as normal, then we, the reader, should also accept it as normal. And that's a hard thing to turn off in the brain, but I'm going to try to do that and assume that talking frogs were something that were a regular occurrence. Maybe, maybe for all I know, instead of croaking out in the middle of the night, you have frogs that are hurling insults at each other and they get really noisy and annoying and then you have to have the cats go out there to i don't know take care of them and who knows do something um so i think the interesting part here one of the interesting things is the king comes in as a very just ruler his daughter promised something granted it was a freaking weird promise to make. But she promised. And she's got to fulfill that promise. That's a requirement. And I think the king is right to enforce that lesson on his daughter. Now, I don't know about you. But a frog... Saying things like, I want to sleep in your bed with you. Weird. Really weird. I... I think that should raise some eyebrows. If, it, if nothing else. And the fact that the princess's reaction to this is to throw the frog at the wall. 
hoping to kill it, and it turns into a prince is just so funny to me. And I don't know if the story is intentionally supposed to be funny. Contrary to some people's beliefs, not all fairy tales are meant to have a moral to the story or like some sort of innate lesson. Sometimes they're just friggin' weird stories, okay? This could be a case of that. It could be that there isn't there's less of a oh, the lesson of the story is don't judge a book by its cover kind of a message, and more that it's just like a weird story that people were telling of like, oh yeah, guess what? Apparently sometimes frogs can be princes, who knew? But how oddly specific is it that the witch that the prince, that turned the prince into a frog, we don't know why the witch did this, maybe because he's petitioning young girls to, I don't know, share their beds or something weird. Who knows, maybe the witch was justified. But this prince was turned into a frog, and only this princess could free him. And the only way that she could free him, it doesn't really say, actually. The story doesn't say what it was that activated it. Um, maybe this is kind of like the D&D polymorph spell, you know, where if... Uh, you get hurt the you know by an attack or something it uses up this the hit points of the creature before putting the rest onto you so maybe it was just like a permanent polymorph and he just needed to be get really badly hurt but according to the story only the princess could have gotten him out of the well which is weird because she didn't actually get him out of the well she just asked the frog to get the ball out for her and then the frog did that and then fulfilled the promise. So it seems strange to me that the princess who did get him out of the well, allegedly, that she didn't... The, the, the weird activation is that when he was thrown into a wall. I'm going to go with the D&D logic in this case. Because I find that personally the most satisfying. Now, the last part with freaking Heinrich faithful Heinrich comes so far out of the blue now I think we like to think of fairy tales as having a very simple structure to them and I don't know where we got that idea from most fairy tales uh, are just like random things happening and then it ends and that's what happened here. I was expecting, oh, ooh, a band snapped. Uh, when the third one snaps, is his heart going to explode? Is he going to die suddenly and it'll be oh so sad? No. <laughs> it's just, oh, all three bands snapped that were keeping his heart together. Uh, the heart of faithful Heinrich. And that's it. That's what happened to him. What a weird story. Well... I hope you enjoyed this story as much as I did. Or minimally, I hope you thought it was as weird as I did. Regardless, please leave a comment. Let me know what you thought. Let me know if there are any stories that you would like me to read in the future and react to. And as always, I am Joe, the Sarcastic Griffin. Stay magical. See you later.